I got a response from Nikki Six. Nikki Six DM'd me. I slid into his DMs and he DM'd me back. Hey guys, what's up? I want to share a story with you today about an event that was pretty freaking amazing and unreal. I honestly can't believe that it happened and I'm so, I, I don't know, it's just really cool that it did. Let me set the stage a little. It's 2007, we had just gotten arrested that year, you know, we were really down on our luck and things were not getting better. We were making bad choice after bad choice and living a life of lies that I just felt like I could not keep up anymore. And somehow my family didn't know or didn't admit that they knew that we were heroin addicts. And it's like, I almost felt like I was keeping up the lie to not hurt them as much as I was keeping it up to save myself from having to go through detox. Cause I didn't want to stop using. I didn't want to continue my life like that, but I didn't want to stop. So Christmas morning, we're at my mom's house. Greg and I are over there. We'd gotten everybody gifts. We had stolen our presents. Like we got these really cool camera things for everybody, but it was because we could steal them. Like Walmart had something going on where they just didn't have security things on this one, like flip video camera. I had actually found mine not that long ago. Well, not that long ago. Like now I guess it's been like six or seven years. And it had a video from the day that I got released from jail. If for some reason my mom still has that, oh God, I hope that, I'll, I'll ask her. I don't know if she still has it, but it was awesome. Um, anyway, so, you know, we give out gifts. We're putting up this good front. Like we gave good gifts. You know, we showed up for the meal. We did the whole, the whole shebang. And my mom gives me this gift and it's a book. So I open it and it is The Heroin Diaries by Nikki Six. And my heart sinks to my stomach. She knows, she knows, she knows. Oh my God, she knows. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to react. I didn't know if I should, I didn't know what to say. It was just so mind blowing. It was like the unspoken thing, the elephant in the room was addressed, but yet it wasn't. That, that book was her way of, I guess, saying like, I'm aware, but not actually saying I know. So that was the first time that I realized other people might be on to me and that my facade was cracking. And I mean, honestly, that, that should have been cracking for a long time, but the them not knowing was as much them being in denial as it was me lying. It, it was definitely a two-way street there. Not to say that they're to blame for that. I'm totally to blame, but that's another video. Nikki Six also put out an album that Christmas. I don't remember if it was the same, uh, title, but the book was The Heroin Diaries, A Year in the Life of a Shattered Rock Star. And the album is kind of like rock. I feel like it was rock Christmas music. I don't know. I'm gonna have to go back and listen to it. But he had a song that like, I mean, I liked it. I liked it a lot. It, it spoke to my heart because I needed somebody to see me. I needed to be seen. I needed to feel like somebody knew how I was feeling and what I was going through and that I would be okay. I... I was too afraid to ask for help. I was too afraid for so many reasons. Uh, I was afraid because I knew that it would mean detoxing. Um, I knew it would mean that I would have to admit that I was living a life of lies and that everything out of my mouth was a lie. Um, but that didn't mean that I didn't love my family or that things that were going on in my life were all lies. It's just that my whole facade was a lie. My exterior was a lie. My interior was still me. And then the big reason was that my relationship with Greg was not going to continue if I admitted that we were heroin addicts. We were so codependent, I could not imagine my life without him. And that just wasn't gonna happen. So I remember another specific like snapshot. We were sitting in my mom's vehicle. She either drove us around everywhere or let us drive her car everywhere. And at this particular moment, she was driving us somewhere. We were in the back seat and we were playing the Nikki Six album. And like, I remember just hearing it, but feeling it and oh, it was a powerful moment. And I knew that I wanted to talk to him. I had to talk to him. Something I felt driven to reach out to him. So we went back to Williamsport and we were stealing Wi-Fi. We were stealing the Wi-Fi from my neighbors. So that was hit or miss. I had a MacBook because I was a graphic design student and my parents were amazing and bought me like the nice top of the line MacBook for that year but we short circuited the RAM drive or something. I don't know much about computers, but it ended up crashing and then that didn't work. So I had like a Nokia phone. Pretty sure it was Nokia, it could have been a Samsung. It was like this little red thing. And it was like the, the first of the first smartphones. One of its big features was that you could listen to music on it. I had a few songs, but not full songs. So I had like Panic at the Disco, Nine in the Afternoon. Is that what that song's called? Yeah, yeah. 
I loved that song. We would play that clip over and over and over again. And I'm pretty sure that I just had like 30 second clips for ringtones and we would just listen to them on repeat. So this thing could connect to data back before data is what it is now. And connecting to data from your smartphone, smartphone, your prehistoric smartphone was like connecting to dial up. It was so slow. And half the time you're like, is this working? What's going on? Am I connected? What's going on? And it charged you. I don't remember if it was that it charged you a lot. I can't remember, honestly. I feel like it was one of those things where like, as soon as you opened it, I like, because it was going to charge you. But at that point, my mom kind of understood that we were in a place that we didn't have a computer that worked. We didn't have cable TV. We didn't have any way. So that was it. So I would get on there to get on MySpace. This is back before Facebook was even like a public thing. Only college students could use it at that point. And Nikki Six has a MySpace page. So I decide to send him a message and I just kind of spill my guts and I'm like, I just read your book and my mom got it for me and I don't know if she actually knows that I'm an addict or if she's trying to reach out to me and I'm so afraid to do this and I don't know what to do. I don't want to live like this forever, but I don't know how to stop. And uh, I thought that was going to be it, you know? Like, who's going to respond to me? How is my message going to be seen? You used to only be able to message people that you were friends with or something. I don't know. They were, I literally cannot remember. It wasn't like it was an, a new thing or a new feature. I just happened to do it from my phone. And that is actually the ticket. I, I guess the system wasn't set up yet to kind of fish out the DMs from mobiles. I don't know. It went through. I sadly deleted my MySpace in... 2009 or 2010. I wish, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Um, but I did. I did because I didn't, I had so much stuff about Greg on there and I just didn't want to see it anymore. I, I it's like, it sucks because I had pictures of me and Molly and me and Greg and just, uh, I had so much of my, my life on there and sadly I decided to delete it and there's no way to retrieve that because I'm an idiot, but if anybody knows how to retrieve a deleted MySpace from 2007, I don't know, like if there's old web pages that store that data somewhere, like, please tell me. I thought that would be the end of it. And I got a response. I got a response from Nikki Six. Nikki Six DM'd me. I slid into his DMs and he DM'd me back. And I just, I still can't believe that it even happened. I wish that I had some sort of screenshot, but it was 2007. 2008, like, I don't even think phones could screenshot then, to be quite honest, actually. No, I don't think they could. Anyway, so he <laughs> said something very simple, very brief, and in all caps, just to show his age. He said, the pain of detox is temporary, but the life you can have in sobriety is forever. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. He's right. There's no, I was looking to him for some sort of magic answer, magic cure, you know, like, the secret, to, the secret to sobriety, how am I gonna do this and make it work? How am I gonna do this? What's the easiest way? What's the best way? What's the magic trick? There's no magic trick, guys. You just have to do it. You have to suck it up and do it. I'm very appreciative that my mom gave me that book that day on Christmas. I know how hard that was for her because she was living in denial. I had put her into this castle, this fortress of denial. And if she admitted that she was wrong, it would mean so many other things. Like it would affect her relationship with her husband. I affected the, my, my mom and my stepdad's relationship. I hurt that so much. I hurt my, I hurt everybody's relationship. I hurt everybody, honestly. That's the one thing about finding recovery is that you can never make up for all of the hurt, all of the hurt you caused. No matter how much you try, no matter how much you try to become a better person, no, how mu no matter how much good you do, you have caused an inordinate amount of pain for your family and you can't take that back. But I'm grateful that I started my recovery journey. It wasn't always rainbows and butterflies from there on out. I am actually going to talk about the last time that I used um, in a video coming soon. It's I know the event. I don't know when it falls on the timeline, but it it was it's a very clear event to me and I, I'm ready to share it. I, I don't, I haven't really been holding back. I guess I've been holding back because I wanted to talk to the person that was involved because somebody else is very heavily involved in that story. And she actually asked me why I hadn't shared it. So I am going to be sharing that one soon. There wasn't much of a point to this video, honestly. I guess, I guess the point is that miracles do happen. Crazy shit happens sometimes. Sometimes the universe just aligns to give you gifts like a DM from Nikki Six. 
it would be super cool if he saw this video and then responded. I know he's like definitely not gonna remember my DM from 2008, but I remember his and that's all that matters. If you guys haven't ever read that book, I'll link it in the description. If I can set up affiliate links, I'll do that, but probs won't because yeah, that's hard. But yeah, that's all I have for today's video. I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.